welcome back. Uh, in our last class, we have discussed about the gas field ionization source uh, that was the main bottleneck for the development of an ion microscope, uh, particularly fabricating a tip that would be stable while producing enough current so that it will create, it will form an image. Uh, today, we will be discussing about uh, the properties of uh, gas field ionization ion source particularly for helium ion microscope and then subsequently we will discuss about ion optical column in helium ion microscope. Uh, so, if we remember our uh, um, previous uh, discussion on scanning electron microscope, the beam size and the prop current are very important. Smaller the beam size and larger the prop current would gives us the best resolution. So, here also in ion microscope it is same, the principle is same, there is no much different. A ion gun or a ion source with a very high brightness is preferred. Uh, with a high brightness we can have a prop much smaller and having a much smaller prop would give us the best resolution. So, today we will see uh, in what way ion microscope uh, is better than scanning electron microscope. Okay. So, in our uh, uh, last class we have uh, discussed about how to fabricate a, a ion gun for helium ion microscope. We normally take a tungsten single crystal wire of length, length around uh, 5 millimeter and the dia around 0.5 to 5 mm. Taking this initially with a tip diameter is normally tip diameter, tip dia it is around uh, 50 to 100 nanometer, it is initially, initially taken and then we apply field while maintaining at a particular temperature. So, by applying the field we evaporate the tip of the tungsten to change a hemispheroidal, hemispheroidal tip to a tip with a pyramidal shape at the at its apex. This pyramidal tip should be formed in a manner that the apex has only three tungsten atoms three tungsten atom and above the three tungsten atom we have hexagon six tungsten atom. So, a particular uh, selected pressure, selected temperature and applied field is maintained to create a tip or at the apex we could we should have only three tungsten atoms that is called trimer, that is called trimer and this trimer can be stable for a longer duration delivering us quite a reasonable prop current to be utilized for the microscopy study. And as you see this trimer generate the ion beam as a three spots and we do not use all three for our purpose, we will only use a single ion beam coming out from a single uh, tungsten atom. So, a atomic tip is used in the ion microscopy purpose and now uh, this atomic uh, tip provides us current in the range of femto ampere to several pico ampere that could be utilized for not only for microscopy purpose, but also for nano fabrication pr uh, purpose. And by and this tip is kept at a temperature, very low temperature of around 60 to 80 Kelvin, 80 to Kel 60 to 80 Kelvin. And when I helium ion is passed to the ion emitter chamber, the gas gaseous atom will be ionized 
at the atomic sites first it will form a ionizing disks so ionizing disks this ionizing disks diameter is in the order of 1 angstrom and thickness is around 0.25 angstrom that is the ionizing disk ionizing disks and in the ionizing disks a helium atom will lose an electron through a tunneling process to the tip and form a ion. Once a ion is formed, the tip is maintained at positive potential and then we apply a extraction voltage at a negative potential. So, therefore, we can pull down the helium ions downward and that would give us this emission. This is what the way we formed the tip by uh, applying the potential to the tip and as the tip is very sharp. Um, so, a concentrated potential is formed at the tip thereby it ionizes the atoms and produce the emission ion emission it do keeps the ion emission current. So, in this way once the tip is formed that tip is used for microscopy purpose and out of these three uh, ion beamlet uh, only one beamlet is uh, focused downwards or brought downwards for the for, for the purpose of microscopy or any other fabrication process. So, if we initially this was the main bottleneck uh, in the development of helium ion microscope because formation of tip. Uh, with a trimer is a was a very stagnant condition. A selected temperature, selected ion pressure, and uh, a selected potential must be applied to form such trimer. And once if you apply a little higher potential, then what will happen? Field evaporation of atom, of atom will occur. So atoms will come out. And if you if we put lower uh, lower potential we cannot uh, efficiently ionize the gas atom to produce the enough current. So, there were several uh, after several trial and error methods we, uh, uh, the process could be developed to form trimer. In any other tip will not be stable for a longer duration though emission can be more. So, one of the particular um, requirement for the tip is forming a trimer at its apex. If we look at the properties properties of the uh, gas field ionization source then uh, our operating extraction voltage is around 25 to 35 kilo volt operating temperature 60 to 90 kelvin so now if we give we if you if we give lower temperature certainly uh, we expect that emission current will increase, but, but below the 60 Kelvin what happens that the helium atoms which is passed to ionize they will become immobile mobile. So, as they become not mobile they cannot reach the effects of the tip and therefore, ionization will not occur at the lower temperature. In addition to that to create a lower temperature we need uh, a device cryo pumping and that produce noise and noise at all is not ex expect uh, not at all acceptable for a stable tip. Similarly, if we go to higher temperature above 90 Kelvin emission current will be less in addition to that the thermal vibration will occur and therefore, tip will not be providing the, uh, uh, the stable current and thus the temperature in the range of 60 to 90 Kelvin is optimum to get the best emission from the tip and in addition to its stability. And this 60 to 90 Kelvin is reached by using solid nitrogen instead though our liquid nitrogen temperature is 77 Kelvin liquid nitrogen is not used for uh, uh, achieving this temperature rather it is the solid nitrogen is used because liquid nitrogen. Uh, 
it in the form of liquid it when it convert to the gases then it will be boiling and that boiling uh, uh, will create vibration and that vibration is not acceptable to get a stable uh, tip. So, solid nitrogen is taken and solid nitrogen would be directly converting to the gaseous gaseous form at a pressure below 0.12 bar. So, below a certain pressure uh, we could achieve solid nitro we could get the solid nitrogen and that would directly convert to the gas without making any vibration or noise in the system and the tip can sustain or it can be stable very highly stable. So, operating temperature must be uh, between 60 to 90. Then base pressure, base pressure is around uh, 10 to the power minus 10 torr. Though our source temperature, uh, source temperature is 10 to the power minus 13 range. If we see uh, that uh, the uh, source pressure will be at the source pressure this will be in the pressure will be here 10 to the power minus 13 torr very high vacuum. On the other hand the base pressure the column pressure can be 10 to the power minus 10 torr and we can have a uh, uh, the chamber pressure or helium gas pressure below the column 10 to the power minus 8 torr and chamber can be minus 7 torr. So, in the column uh, there is variable pressure and the differential pumping uh, aperture uh, is used to maintain different pressure at different parts of the column without disturbing the um, high vacuum near the gun region or the ion source region and at the uh, though we maintain we give it base pressure of 10 to the minus 10 torr because we apply a very high field at the tip of the ion source it would polarize the gas atom near the tip and that would and under the applied field that would create a bubble there and that bubble has a much higher vacuum of 10 to the power minus 13 torr at near the gun. Otherwise a pressure base pressure of 10 to the power 10 is maintained by using different type of pumps with a very uh, high speed turbo pump which can pump down with a speed of um, 1000 liter per second to maintain this and the cryogen is maintained this cryogen is maintained with solid nitrogen solid nitrogen. In this way pressure is maintained inside a inside the microscope to uh, operate the microscope operating and operating pressure here operating pressure is 10 to the power 6 to 7 minus 7 this is the gas pressure helium helium gas pressure is maintained and we could achieve a brightness of around 5 into 10 to the power 9 ampere per centimeter square steradian uh, which is uh, a order of magnitude higher than what we achieve with field emission scanning electron microscope. And the reduced brightness is 1 into 10 to the power 9, it is reduced brightness is per volt. Uh, this is a very high brightness that could be achieved with the uh, ion source. Energy spread is uh, around 1 electron volt with this is the full width half maximum. It is not as good as field emission scanning electron microscope, but as good as lanthanum of hexabride LAB6 uh, electron gone, but it is good enough uh, to for our study. Deep Broglie wavelength as you see is 0 0.8, 0 0.080 picometer, 0 0.080 picometer compared to in our scanning electron microscope it is in the range of 0 0.0. 0 0.01 nanometer. So, wavelength is very small deep broccoli wavelength that gives us the best high resolution we can make the prop size much smaller. Virtual source diameter is around 0.25 nanometer it is the distance between two atoms at the tip distance between the minimum distance between two atoms at the tip this is what the virtual source size is taken 0.25 nanometer that we could get a much smaller size prop in the ion microscope total emitted current is 150 pico ampere which is from 3 uh, three atoms trimers it is taken 150 the current achieved with all three uh, atoms is 150 but for one um, atoms it will be less but it is uh, approximately 50 pico ampere 
for our microscopy study we only need one picoampere for routine measurement we need only one picoampere we do not need more much but for like fabrication on other type of process we may need in the range of 10 picoampere to 30 picoampere which is good enough angular emission angular emission upon extracting the ion beam from a single atom the angular emission is in the 0.5 degree very small emission current stability uh, less than 1 percent change per hour less than 1 percent uh, change per hour uh, this value uh, this value is uh, considerably uh, higher for neon uh, emission current stability depending on the gas for uh, uh, for, heli for helium it is less than 1 percent, but for helium it is uh, even better. Uh, uh, trimer lifetime is around 80 hours for, for helium ion source, but for neon for neon etcetera it will be uh, the trimer lifetime will be little less. So, what we see that uh, several uh, gas field ionization source, source properties which are uh, much superior compared to the scanning electron microscope or electron microscope and these superior properties properties gives us quite better performance in uh, the scanning microscopy purpose. Uh, if we look at the column that may primary function of the optical column in helium ion microscope, uh, there are two primary function first to the column function is first to uh, image the uh, ion beam into the, onto the specimen as a very finer spot, very finer focused prop with a high prop current. We can certainly reduce the prop current uh, by using suitable uh, aperture uh, that is not a big tax to reduce the current, but to increase a high prop current is a difficult tax. This is the DC property and the second function is to scan the ion beam on the specimen. So, like in scanning electron microscope, we scan the electron beam across the sample and collect the signal from each points on the specimen. Similar way, uh, the column will provide um, required arrangements so that we one can scan the ion beam on the specimen. So, these are the two primary functions of the optical column. So, now we will see how uh, first, we will first see how fine spot we could get uh, using ion microscope. So, prop size, if we look at the prop size, uh, then prop size depends on uh, first certainly depends on the diameter of the source image. The diameter of the source for helium ion, for helium ion, the diameter of source image for helium ion, the diameter of source image is we can write uh, d i which will be root over of 4 i p this is prop current divided by B r which is the reduced brightness E pi square alpha i square. So, here I p is the prop current, B r is the reduced brightness, reduced brightness as reduced brightness is quite high we can have a diameter of the source image can be small uh, e is the acceleration voltage accelerating voltage and alpha i is the half angle in the image side on the image side. So, or angle of aperture in the image side. What we see here? The diameter of the source image is certainly depends on the brightness 
as the brightness is in the 10 to the power 9 range, the diameter of the source image can be small as possible. But again, this is this diameter also will be affected by different type of aberration inside the microscope. Particularly, first aberration is diffraction aberration. Diffraction aberration, we know diffraction aberration uh, defined as DD like in previous cases which is you, will be equal to 7.78 into 10 to the power minus 12 root over of E alpha i. This is the diffraction aberration and we have also spherical aberration. We have spherical aberration which is uh, we uh, give as symbol d s, uh, d s is 0.18 c s alpha i to the power q, where c s is the spherical aberration coefficient and alpha i is again half angle of the beam on the image side to the power q. In the previous case also the similar uh, formula is used, only this, this part is was different, otherwise they are proportional to the spherical aberration coefficient and uh, uh, angle of aperture um, um, 3 power of angle of aperture this is spherical aberration. And another aberration which is chromatic aberration, chromatic aberration which is DC, DC chromatic aberration which is equal to 0 0.34 uh, del E divided by E uh, into alpha i, same way like in scanning electron microscope. So, these are the three uh, aberration that would again increase the uh, d i prop size. So, the final prop size will be d i plus these three. Uh, so, actually uh, another formula is used uh, uh, for total final prop size can be calculated with a final prop size the, the final prop size each formula is like uh, dp will be equal to root over of uh, d d to the power 4 plus d s to the power 4 1.3 divided by 4 plus d i d i to the power 1 1.3 uh, d i to 1.3 which is 2 over 1.3 plus d c to the power square. This is what the final prop size the fi final prop size this equation is used to calculate the final prop size of a ion beam microscope or of a ion beam inside a, a ion microscope. And from this equation, we could see that the, the final prop size depends primarily on the d i, the prop, uh, prop size, initial prop size. We have quite a uh, small uh, diffraction uh, abrasion in this case spherical aberration and uh, chromatic aberration is also not very uh, significant in ion microscope. And taking in this into account, uh, we can plot the prop size, prop size versus, uh, uh, versus angle of aperture like alpha, like we can take uh, let us say prop size, prop size in nanometer let us say 0.01 nanometer, 0 0.01, 1, 10, 100. In this axis, we can take 0 0.1, 1, 10. Let us say this is image half angle. that is alpha i 
this is in milli radian. Now, the first is diffraction aberration. Uh, diffraction aberration will certainly uh, decrease uh, if we increase the alpha. Diffraction uh, aberration will decrease uh, with um, with the alpha because diffraction aberration is inversely proportional to the uh, prop, uh, prop to, to the alpha or angle of aperture and similarly the brightness will also reduce brightness will be reduced this is brightness because when angle of aperture is larger then we, we will have a very smaller or finer spot therefore brightness will reduce uh, then we could have a spherical aberration and chromatic aberration uh, for example the spherical aberration will go this will be spherical aberration spherical aberration which is 3 alpha q that is why it is increasing as alpha is increasing spherical aberration uh, then we can have also uh, chromatic aberration chromatic aberration is also proportional to the alpha or angle of uh, aperture then it will also increase like this this will be chromatic aberration aberration and our this one was diffraction aberration diffraction aberration uh, by taking into all this factor into account we will have we will have a uh, the final prop size will change like this this will be the total prop size taking into account our final spot size final spot size as you see final spot size uh, final spot size can be of around 0 0.35 nanometer optimal at an uh, at a this angle of around 0 0.35 milli radian alpha 0 0.35 milli radian so we and this graph is at for if we uh, use acceleration voltage of 30 kilo electron volt with a current of let us say point a current of 0.5 pico ampere with 0.5 pico ampere of prop current and 30 kilo electron volt of acceleration voltage we could achieve uh, a spot size of 0.35 uh, nanometer at a alpha value or angle of aperture uh, image side half angle of 0.35 milli radian. So, this is quite uh, impressive in the sense that uh, uh, in our uh, scanning electron microscope previously what we have studied uh, that could reach uh, a prop size of around 0.5 uh, the smallest prop size of 0.5 uh, nanometer to 1 nanometer therefore, resolution cannot be better than that. In these cases we are achieving a uh, uh, a prop size of 0.35 therefore, we could achieve a resolution of uh, 0.35 nanometer and in this condition uh, the column magnification uh, column magnification will be can be written as can be calculated from equation m is equal to alpha 0 to the power alpha i uh, root over of e x by E, where this is the extraction voltage, extraction voltage that is needed to bring down or extract the ion from the source voltage, E is the landing acceleration voltage or landing voltage or acceleration accelerating voltage that, that is the energy of ions when it imprint on the sample uh, surface. Al, uh, alpha 0 is the um, is the um, angle of aperture half half angle beam at the source side source side this is in the image side half angle beam angle beam on the image side image side 
and in this in this uh, uh, magnification for a helium ion microscope uh, m can is value uh, with an optimal condition we can have mag, uh, m value of 0 0.6 uh, 0 0.72 magnification this is this can be achieved for the cases of uh, helium ions and this value is this is value is quite high close to almost 1 and at this high magnification value the source must be very stable if we take helium uh, if we take instead of helium we, if we take a neon neon ion then this value will be smaller m will be smaller if when m will be smaller the source can be little less stable it can be uh, used but as m value is quite large here 0 0.72 which is close to the one much closer to the one therefore the source must be very stable high magnification means source must be very stable otherwise uh, the source will uh, source will not be uh, a slight deviation uh, in its position will change the beam position drastically and, uh, and that is a great care and engineering effort is needed to make the source to be stable and one of the way is they have done is by putting the uh, at the cryo temperature of around 60 to 90 Kelvin. So, this is about the prop size how small prop we can get by uh, get in case of helium ion microscope and that uh, uh, the resolution can be far better in helium ion microscope as compared to the scanning electron microscope. We will see other, uh, other parts in the column how that influence the ion beam and how the uh, ion beam is scanned across the surface of the sample in our next lecture. Thank you.